Hi, and welcome to a new video. In this week's video, I will show you a watch that I didn't know existed and I came across by chance. The way I came across this watch was that a couple of months ago when I bought a other small Amiga, a reference number 711-2026, I actually liked the size and although that watch was really a women's watch from the early 1970s, I sort of liked it. I have a relatively small wrist, so I don't have a problem with small watches. In fact, I usually have a problem with big watches. So that watch kicked up the desire for a Cartier tank. I thought that that small Omega was cool, but I always wanted a Cartier tank and it's really hard to find them and they're rather expensive. Even the cheap ones who are gold plated and have weird funky dials who are not really my style. I was prepared to buy one of them just to have the experience. Obviously I was intrigued by the Cartier name, but really I like the tank shape. I wanted a tank watch. I started looking for those watches and at that time I already knew that in the 1970s and 1980s not only had Cartier made those type of watches but also Piaget. So I looked into buying a Piaget because the Cartier was so hard to find but I wasn't really lucky and I couldn't really find a Piaget either because they are now really in high demand also. But when I looked for tank watches more broadly on eBay I came across this Omega reference and it absolutely blew my mind. I didn't know this watch existed. This watch is a reference number 5110404 and it was made in the 1970s and I believe up into the 1980s and it really basically is a stylized steel version of a Cartier tank. I could not have wished for more. This watch absolutely was exactly the watch I wanted. This was exactly the watch I was looking for without knowing that this watch existed. And that's why I want to share this watch with you today. And first of all, I want to give you some numbers so that you can compare them if you want to. The watch has a width with the crown of 25.8 millimeters, without the crown of 24.6. Between the lux it's 19 millimeters, which uh, it's a little bit more complicated to find straps for, but well, what can you do? The lock to lock is 31.5, so it's really rather small, and the case thickness is an incredible 6.2 millimeters. Yeah, so that's a really compact package of a watch. When I came across the watch, I couldn't really believe that this watch really existed. So I searched a little bit more and incredibly I found the watch in the online Amiga archive. And here the watch is, <laughs> incredibly, on the Amiga archive website. It's listed as the 5110404 and it's also is stamped in my case back with that reference number. There are different variations of dials actually. And um, yeah, I happen to have the very clean, straightforward one, which really beautifully plays in the light as well. And I was able to find the watch in really brand new, basically unworn condition. Yeah, I, I, really, uh, I really enjoy it. What makes this watch so great is that it is not a compromise and uh, I will give you some features right now so that you have a better idea. The watch has a real stainless steel case, so no plating, you know, the case doesn't wear off, which gives it a really strong presence, especially if you know about it. The watch has a real glass, which not only protects it to a little higher degree from scratches, but it also makes it feel much more like a quality product. The size of the watch really is very close to the original proportions by Cartier, but it doesn't feel like an exact copy. If you compare them, it really sort of tries to be its own thing, despite being obviously entirely influenced. And for some reason, that does not come off as gimmicky or a fake or blatant clone of some sort. The worst that I can think of this watch is as a very, very good homage, but obviously from a company that makes really high quality watches. So that elevates the watch in itself and makes it its own thing. Another thing is that Cartier, for example, at some point used basically generic ETA movements who got a stamp with Cartier on it and were thrown into the watches. In this watch is a 625 Omega movement, which is hand winding of really good quality and it's basically unworn in this watch and it belongs in this watch. There's not a compromise and uh, I really appreciate that.
The movement in this watch is a caliber 625. It's a hand-wound, unadjusted movement, which is surprisingly capable. Omega used this movement all across its, I would say, jewelry watches or ladies' watches. So it was produced in really high numbers. There are a couple of generations of this movement. They developed over time. It not only is very well made, it also looks incredibly beautiful. It's back in that era when Omega, you know, made this beautiful sort of red gold finish on its movements and for me that is also a character of Amiga like I have an early Seamaster which has sort of the same movement color and I, I really just appreciate it they they put thought in it and they delivered a quality product and obviously the watch is I believe underappreciated right now but competitively measured against the Cartier and the Piaget steel has been more appreciated in, in recent times in vintage watches and uh, Cartier and Piaget's in silver and gold are much more common. Steel is very rare, but it's rugged and capable, and therefore it's even more interesting that Omega made its version of a tank in steel. I can't really speak to the rarity of this watch. I haven't found many of them. There seem to be, if you google the reference number, there seem to be a lot more of those watches with Roman numeral dials, which I also like, but I haven't come across one that was specifically for sale. And this iteration of the dial that I have with the uh, blacked out hands, I haven't seen not so many of them. But I like the really clear and clean structure of the dial. Back when these watches were made, Omega was not, especially not in the ladies' watch, watches using serial numbers in cases as organized as it did in, in other watches. We have serial numbers on the movements, but they can be years off from the watch that they are actually in. And it also could be a replacement movement, so we will never know if, uh, if the movement number in this watch is, is actually the one of the time the watch was built. There are numbers in the cases, but these are very low numbers. The case number in this watch is a three digit number and it has nothing to do with the reference number or with anything else i i cross check that so it's a very low production number so i can't tell you how many of those watches were made i can't tell you how common they are i only can tell you that i have a watch with a three digit case number and a movement number that corresponds to 1972 that's really anything i can tell about this watch I have not discovered this watch, let's be real, but I think this is a watch that has been overlooked so far, and this is a watch that, although not terribly, terribly expensive, and it probably never will be terribly expensive, it is really still an interesting piece and something that you can hunt for and something that you can discover for yourself. This watch, in its value, is probably half as much as a Cartier or a Piaget. So it's a really affordable option from a great company. And yeah, if you have any questions or if you have any more information on this watch, please let me know and write it down in the comments down below. And if you haven't seen the video about the first Amiga, which was also an amazing find, the video is linked in the description and now in the top right corner of this video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on new videos in the future. And you can also follow me on Instagram for more content. You find the link for Instagram in the video description. If you have any watchmaking related questions or if you have any ideas for future videos, feel free to comment them in the comment section down below. Thank you and I hope to see you in the next video again.